One of the most powerful and unique features of Bandhelper is the ability to view your songs with different layouts, including custom layouts that you create. You can set up one layout that prioritizes the functions that are most important to you, or set up multiple layouts that you can switch to for different situations like practicing or performing. Because there are so many options, this is going to be a long video, but I'll put the most commonly used info first, and you can click in the progress bar below to skip to different sections. To use song layouts, you'll either need to view a set list or a smart list. A set list is a subset of your songs that you set up and sequence before a show. A smart list is a larger, sorted collection of songs that you can select from on the fly as you perform. The first time you view a set list or smart list, you'll be prompted to select a layout. So you could pick split view and the set list opens with that layout. Now if you go back and select a set list or smart list again, the list of layouts is replaced with a single view button that will select that same layout again. That avoids the need to select your preferred layout every time. But if you want to use a different one, you can click more layout options to see the full list. However, if you select a set list or smart list from a shortcut on the home page or the repertoire page, you'll be taken directly to the set list or smart list bypassing the layout selection. Once you're viewing a set list or a smart list, you can also change to a different layout without backing out of that view. Just click the layouts button in the top toolbar and select a different one. Now let's take a look at the predefined layouts that are created when you set up your account. You can use these as is, or use them as a starting point for customization. If you don't see the same names listed here on your device, you can go to Help, Utilities, Rename Default Layouts, and Load Default Layouts to update to the current defaults. Full Screen Lyrics initially shows a large song list with buttons to access common functions for each song. If you click a Document button, the document will open full screen over the list and you can double-click the middle of the document to hide it and return to the list. This is best if you want the largest possible lyrics display, with the trade-off being that all other functions are hidden while viewing the lyrics. Overlapping buttons gives you nearly full-screen lyrics, but allows access to a couple other functions by placing them right on top of the document viewer, and it keeps the top toolbar visible. You can show the song list by two-fingered tapping anywhere on the screen, and the song list will hide again when you select a song. More Buttons is similar to Overlapping Buttons, but the document viewer is a little smaller, making room for more buttons along the left side. You can show and hide the song list with a two-fingered tap again, or use this Song List button in the top left. This layout is best if you want to trade a bit of lyrics space for more button space. You can use the More Controls layout if you want access to even more functions, including quick access to multiple MIDI presets, song notes, and a full set of recording controls. When you select a document, it appears over the middle area of the layout, leaving the recording controls and song list accessible. You can then double-click the middle of the document to hide it again. This layout is best for rehearsing when lyric size is less important, but access to alternate versions and practice tools is more important. Big Fields includes a persistent song list and a set of buttons, as well as several fields showing song info that is large enough to easily read on stage. After you've selected a song and reviewed the info, you can click the Document button or two-fingered tap anywhere on the screen to show the full screen document viewer. Then double-click the middle of the document or two-fingered tap to hide it again. This layout is best if you want to access various info about songs during a performance, not just lyrics. And Split View shares the space between a song list, song buttons, and the document viewer. This layout is best if you want both your song list and your lyrics to remain visible all the time. Now let's talk about customizing your layouts. The easiest things to customize are the layout actions, which are shortcuts to functions that you can use while performing. You can click the Edit Layout button in the top toolbar, select Edit Details, and scroll down to Actions. Let's say that for each song you want to start auto-scrolling and start a backing track. You could click the Document button and then the Recording button for each song, but Layout Actions make this easier. You can click Start Stop Auto-Scroll and select Song Selection, then click Start Stop Recording and select Song Selection. Now whenever you select a song in the set list, both functions will start automatically. 
But what if you're not sure what song you want to play next, or you want to look over the song for a few moments before starting, or you need to wait for the rest of the band to get ready? In that case, instead of setting these layout actions to song selection, you can set them to song second selection. Then when you select a song from the set list, the song appears, but these functions don't start yet. When you're ready, you can select the same song again, and then they will start. A similar option is to set these layout actions to two-fingered tap. Then, instead of selecting the song a second time, you can tap with two fingers anywhere on the screen to start these functions. Layout actions are also used to show or hide overlapping elements in the layouts. For example, in the More Buttons layout, you can show and hide the song list by two-finger tapping, or hide it by selecting a song. Those functions are handled by the layout actions. You can also assign layout actions to a song completion. This means that you can trigger functions automatically at the end of a song. For example, you could have a document viewer open while playing a song, then have it close automatically at the end. Or you could select the next song automatically when a song ends. You could combine that layout action with Start Stop Recording on Song Selection to make a layout that continuously plays through the recordings for each song. I use a layout like that to listen to all the songs in that night's set list while I'm driving to a gig. The layout actions control the functionality of a layout, but now let's talk about customizing the visual display. If you're using a mobile device on stage, it's important to make the best use of your limited screen space. So we can add buttons or content that we need, and strip away everything we don't need. Starting at the top toolbar, we have several buttons in the middle. Besides the layout switching and layout editing buttons, we can also edit the current song, quickly add a song that's not in the set list, or select a random song. But if there's a button here that you never use, you can click the Edit Layout button, select Edit Details, scroll down to Top Toolbar Buttons, and turn it off. Now for the bottom toolbar. You can select up to four different song fields to appear down here. To change what fields are selected, click the Edit Layout button, then select Edit Buttons and Fields. Then click one of the four slots and select a different field. For the song-related fields, you also have a plus one and plus two option. This will show the value for the next song in the set list, or the song after that. So, let's say you change instruments periodically during a show. You could set up a custom field that shows your instrument for each song. Then place the plus one version of that custom field down here. Then you'll have a heads up before a song that requires an instrument change. If these bottom toolbar fields aren't useful to you, you can choose Remove for all of them. Then the bottom toolbar will be hidden, and you can use that space for the rest of your layout. So you could go to Edit Layout, Song List, and resize that taller. And then go to Edit Layout, Document Viewer, and resize that taller. Actually, you can add text fields directly to your layout rather than just to the bottom toolbar, and this gives you more control over the size and positioning. Let's go back to the document viewer and make that shorter and move it down. Then let's go to Buttons and Fields again, click the empty area we just made, and select the capo field. This is another custom field I made in this account. I can change the text size by changing the height of the field. The buttons in the main area of the layout are also customizable. Let's say you never use the Automation Track button. While editing the buttons and fields, you can click the X icon for that button. Boom, it's gone. But let's say instead that you want to play a starting pitch for each song. So you can click the empty area where that button used to be, and select Pitch button, and drag to position it. Then go back to the Edit Layout button and select Save, and there it is. Some buttons also have a multiple version that shows a separate button and label for each item attached to a song. For example, this song has three MIDI presets attached. You could tap and hold the single MIDI preset button to select them, but you can also add a separate button for each preset. Let's resize the song list to make some room.
then go back to Edit Buttons and Fields and add multiple MIDI buttons. Note that I can lay these buttons out horizontally or vertically depending on how I size the box. And now I can select a specific MIDI preset with just one click. There are a few more options in Buttons and Fields, like a set of recording controls, volume sliders for the various audio functions, and a set of buttons that let you jump to specific pages in a document. Some layout items are more complex and have options of their own. When editing the document viewer, you can click the Options button in its top right corner and set it to two-column view, change its alignment, mirror it for teleprompters, etc. And when editing the song list, you can click its Options button to change its text sizes, add buttons, and add fields. If you're putting a lot of items into a layout, you can make it look nicer by adding background boxes and lines to visually group elements. And you don't have to worry about lining up and sizing elements perfectly because we have some functions to do that for you. You can drag to select multiple items, click the Options button for the group, and then choose a button to align the items, space them equally, or set them all to the same size. Now let's say you removed something from a layout and can't figure out how to get it back, or you made a change that you don't understand. Like all edits in BandHelper, you can go to the Settings, Account Sync page, and click the Rollback button. This shows all your edits in the last 90 days. For example, I'll go back to the first edit I made to the Split View Layout's items and its toolbar items. If I select those edits and click Save, that layout will be rolled back to the way it was before we made those two edits. If you want to manage your list of available layouts, you can go to the Repertoire Layouts page, select a layout, and click Edit Details. From here, you can deactivate layouts you're not using to hide them from your list, or delete layouts you definitely no longer need. However, please note that someone else in your account might be using the same layout, so unless you're the only user a layout is assigned to, you should check with your bandmates before deactivating or deleting or you can simply remove yourself from that layout to hide it from your list without affecting what anyone else sees. If you do delete one of the predefined layouts and want to get it back, you can always click Help, Utilities, Load Default Layouts. This will reload any predefined layouts that have been deleted, but won't affect any existing layouts that you might have customized. And, by the way, we talked about customizing existing layouts, but you can also create new layouts from scratch. Just click the plus button at the top of the layouts list, click edit details to enter a name, click continue, and then use these buttons to edit the elements of your layout. Finally, I'll say more about accessing and sharing layouts. A layout is normally only used on one particular screen size and orientation. So in the Layouts list, you'll see the layouts that match your current device in its current orientation, followed by the layouts that match your current device in the other orientation, followed by layouts that match other devices in your account. Note that if you edit, for example, the split view layout for this device, that won't affect the split view layout for another device with a different screen size, because that is actually a different layout. 
This allows each layout to make the best use of each screen that it runs on. But if it's too tedious to maintain separate layouts for each screen size, you have two options. First, you can go to the Edit Details page and turn on the Scalable option. Now the layout will be available to view on any device, but it might be letterboxed or pillarboxed, like when you watch a movie on your tablet. But any changes you make to the layout will now appear on all devices because they are using literally the same layout. The second option is to select a layout from a different device, click Edit Details, and click Copy to this device. This will actually make a new copy of the layout for this device's screen size, so future edits will not be shared. But this does take all the settings from that original layout and copy them over, so you can simply fine-tune the positioning of items in this layout rather than redoing all your customizations from scratch. As I said at the beginning, there are a lot of options to consider here, but getting familiar with layout editing will let you do things that, as far as I know, you can't do in any other music app.